Welcome to 2021. I hope your new year is off to a good start so far. In this video, I'll be sharing my 2021 bullet journal setup. Similar to last year, I'm using another Archer and Olive notebook. The same dot grid pages and also the same page count of 192 pages. Most of their notebooks are 160 pages, but I just find that I need more pages for my bullet journal because I like to try and make it all fit in one notebook rather than splitting up the first and second half of the year in two separate notebooks. I also like how thick their pages are. This is 160 GSM, so pretty thick. In the back of the notebook, there's a pocket so that you can store things. And there's also two bookmarks. One of them has this ampersand charm. Normally I go with a black or a dark color, but I actually liked this teal color and the crossing arrows in gold foil stamped on the front. And it's something different for me. Here you can see a side-by-side -side comparison of my 2020 and a new 2021 bullet journal. The one thing that I don't like about these linen covers is they pick up everything. I happen to have a cat and so you can see little bits of cat hair here and there. So something to keep in mind for these linen covers. So before I start setting up the 2021 journal, I flipped through my old journal and just took some notes on what were the spreads that I used the most which are ones that I didn't get that much out of and anything new that I wanted to add for the new year. I wanted to be sure to count up these pages and make sure they would all fit within the 192 pages before I started creating them. Up first is decorating the interior cover page. I searched through a bunch of photos that I took on my camera roll for my iPhone and chose one that I liked the most and printed it out on this thick watercolor paper. And I wanted to include that as the main focal point. I looked for other scraps of paper to layer it with, such as some of this brown craft paper and a little piece of a music sheet to give it a little bit more interest. For thicker pieces of paper like this watercolor paper, I use the adhesive tape just because I find that that holds up better than a glue stick. Sometimes when you use a glue stick, it might start to curl at the end. And there's my cat. You might see him pop in and out here and there. I used a gold jelly roll pen to write in my name and also a black marker and silver for writing in the 2021. What's different from last year is I didn't want to spend time making all of these little calendars for the future log. So instead I searched online and found someone that was selling these mini calendars on Etsy. And I think they were on sale for like $1.85, which was a pretty good deal. So I printed those out, cut them and pasted them in for my future log. If you also don't want to write in all of these tiny little calendars, you can do the same. There's so many available online. For me, it was hard to find one that I liked because a lot of the font styles were just too crafty and too like cursive-y and just not my aesthetic. So it took me a while to find one with a minimal font style. Originally, I wanted to include all 12 months on one spread, but after printing them out, I just realized it wasn't gonna all fit, so I ended up using two spreads. For the top borders, I wanted to use a light gray marker in the background. Here I am testing out the Copic markers, but I noticed that these bled through very heavily to the other side of the paper, as you'll see as I flip over to the next page. So for the rest of my borders uh, for this setup, I just used the light gray Tombow pen instead. After finishing up with the future log spreads, I flipped back and filled in the key on the first page. I always feel like the first page is kind of, you know, useless because of the way that the side is glued in. So I just thought I would use that for something simple like the key. The next page I dedicated to 2021 goals and the second page I decided to divide in half the top half for bucket list and the second half for places I traveled to. 
Something else I decided to do differently from last year's journal is to dedicate four pages for the books that I read. For 2020, I just did one page and drew out a bookshelf with all of these tiny little books that I would write down the titles of the books and color them in as I finish. But I happen to really love book cover design and so I decided that for this year I wanted to print out all of the book covers for all the books that I read and just arrange them in a nice grid and because of that they'll take up more space so this is why I'm giving it four pages. The next spread is dedicated to my financial tracker and fitness and health tracker. I didn't make any changes to the financial tracker from last year because I found that it worked well for me but for the fitness tracker, I decided to do things differently. Last year, I did my tracking in the monthly spreads versus at the beginning with my yearly pages. I think it would be nice to have it all on one page to look back on versus having to flip through for each month. While most of my bullet journal is a pretty minimal setup, I do like to dress up the monthly divider spreads where I do each month, like January, February, and so forth. So for this spread, I'm doing a little bit of collage. I wanted to use some more of that brown craft paper, but I thought I would have it in the middle of the spread so that it carries to both pages. And I also wanted to include this newspaper clipping of the world map and kind of create this tr world travel theme. I also like to collect the stamps from things that I receive as packages or mails, so I added these international stamps to give it more of that worldly travel vibe. And to finish off the design, I wanted to add some hand lettering for the word January. I used black India ink and this homemade calligraphy metal nib pen that I created many years ago to write out the word January. And I added 2021 underneath. Lately, I like to stamp my work when I'm done with it. So I use this date stamp to add in the January 1st, 2021 to the bottom. The next spread is the January calendar spread. I built this one similar to all the calendar spreads I created for 2020. Again, it's pretty minimal, just black pen, some light gray marker to add little accents here and there. I start my calendars off with a Sunday. I added the January 2021 title and also added a section for focus for this month where I can put things that I want to focus on or mini goals or so forth as little notes on the side. Since January starts on a Friday, I didn't want to have a full spread just for three days. So on this first page, I'm dedicating it toward my monthly goals for January. And then on the second page, adding in little spaces for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and notes for the following week. I also went ahead and set up the next week's spread for the full week, Monday through Sunday. This layout I'm changing up a little bit. In the past, I mostly did a horizontal layout, but I found that I just wasn't utilizing the space that much, so I decided to try out this layout where I'm dividing the page up into four quadrants, and that way I have a thinner column but more lines to write my to-do items. And that concludes my 2021 bullet journal and January setup. Now let's do a final flip through. Here on the key page you can see how much that Cupic marker bleeds in to the other side. So something to keep in mind if you like to use that type of marker in these notebooks. I'd love to hear about your bullet journal do you keep one? How do you organize it? Are there any specific spreads that you like to include that I didn't? Leave a comment down below and let me know. I'd love to hear about it. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the reading tracker spread turns out as the year unfolds when I add in all of the book covers. I think it'll be a nice visual way to look back on all of the books that I've read.
The finance and fitness trackers are also fun ones to look back on just because it's a nice easy way to look at all of your progress over one entire year. And that's it for this bullet journal setup. If you're curious to see what my 2020 bullet journal setup looked like, I will leave a link down below to that video so you can check it out and see how it differs from this year's setup.